Uh, yeah, sorry. So um, this is going to be a very short talk. Um, just to remind about a um, patch set I posted a few years ago that was about... Because <laughs> you all forgot, right? <laughs> So this patch, this patch set was about uh, per vector masking. So currently, when soft queues are executing, they, uh, one vector serviced cannot be preempted by the servicing of another soft IRQ vector. And, um, and soft IRQ disabled regions cannot be interrupted by the soft IRQ servicing. Okay, so um, I introduced a few um, few functions to be able to um, disable only specific vectors instead of disabling all of them at the same time. So that, for example, if uh, a given code chunk disables uh, the net re the networking receive soft tire queues, uh, well, uh, timer soft tire queue can. Uh, interrupt that region and uh, and uh, execute on top of it. Uh, this also works for uh, spin lock BH and and related uh, soft IRQ disablement functions. And uh, one thing that this uh, patch set wouldn't do yet was uh, per vector unmasking. So this is the reverse. When we service a soft IRQ, uh, well, this disable all soft tire queues. So one thing that we could do is to uh, enable a specific set of vectors when we execute a soft tire queue callback, if we know that this is safe. Like for example, if I execute a timer callback and I know that this timer callback is safe enough to, uh, to be interrupted by another soft tire queue vector like net receive or net transmit or whatever, then I can enable uh, temporarily uh, soft IRQs. queues. So I was wondering if uh, such a patch set would be welcome nowadays. I think so, but I'm not sure. So what's the uh, general opinion? At the time I posted the patch set, it was only useful uh, for real time. Nowadays, I don't know if it might be useful outside real time. Anyway, so uh, input on that. One, yep. Uh, it looks oddly similar, similar to what is being done for signals in user space. And the design that you, that you do for that is a specific signal handler is associated with a mask of the signal that needs to be masked or not. Yep. So maybe rather than having those disable and enable local and things like that, maybe you could start by having in the definition of the soft IRQ handler a mask associated with it. So it would be clear that, okay, yes, this handler allows enabling those and those are masked out. Mm -hmm. but rather than start, starting to play games kind of locally disabling and everything, I mean, you make it clear that this handler needs to support it. So you mean for each callback there would be a specific... Mask. Yeah, but there are tons of these. Yes, but you, you start by keeping the old behavior. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, as you specialize and review code of, of a few, then, I mean, you could, okay, uh, start enabling some of the of the other soft tire queues so they could nest. Yeah, so even more fine grained, right? Uh, than what I'm proposing. Mm, well, it's, I mean, associating a, a, the callback of the soft tire queue with the definition of what it supports as, as nesting, rather than adding in the code some regions that mm -hmm. kind of, oh yes, this, this piece is, is good to go and not. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think Sebastian has a question. Do we? So back then, as you posted the first version, I was test driving in RT, and I have no idea what you implemented back then for unmasking specifically, but I remember I was using it for, for a few hours and it was like perfect. And then at some point, um, the timer kicked in and used the same software that we didn't see uh, to begin with. 
and then you lock tab extensions uh, trigger the warning to make us yeah. aware of the error. Yeah, um, yeah there was a lock tab detection uh, well, based on locking, which would detect if you uh, abusively enable the vector and detect it if, if, if another vector that had been enabled could interrupt the current one and, um, and exactly. explode, deadlock. Yes, so from our team point of view, we wouldn't care at all because we would never deadlock, we would um, still go through. But for mainline, this is like necessary because otherwise you will deadlock mainline wise. Yeah. Um, my point is that it's kind of difficult to see, um, especially networking where the call chains are very deep. Right. We never saw the timer to begin with, right? Mm -hmm. So this is kind of nasty. So it looks complex to begin with. Yeah, it is. So I have no idea how many fans we get for that. Because um, networking has a lot of pre-CPU data that is protected only with BH disable. Um, not all of them are documented as in we disable here because this is the data we protect. Yeah. Often we re they rely on a spin lock that also disables uh, and this is it. Yeah. And they also rely that we do this here and the timer as well, but never can run at the same time. Yeah, unfortunately, that cannot be detected with like that or things like that. Yeah. yeah. So as much as I'm a fan of that one, um, it looks pretty complex for that. It is. Yeah. Uh, also, I don't remember from the uh, cover letter if you had like some numbers showing uh, know, numbers from use cases where this really helped, like. Uh, if you had that, I was curious. Uh, well, I did really some very light testing, and I did not really measure anything. Mm. Um, but there were there were a lot of call sites, um, especially networking, I guess, where uh, the yeah software queue can last for a long yeah. time, and yeah. then it could be useful, I guess. Yes, against timers. Maybe. Yeah. Right retain timers yeah. uh, from executing for a long time. Yeah. It was deemed to be short anyway, so. <laughs>